Yeah. Got a hot one for snack. My phone's not very clean right now. I wish you could like take a picture of the phone. Oh, I'll do this. All right, well those were examples of bloat surgery, also known as a ruminostomy, or cutting a window into a cow's rumen. So the reason we do that surgery is because those animals are chronic bloaters. Uh, those animals in particular were bloating up and needing tubed twice daily. And it really is just a matter of time until they bloat and die of free gas bloat. Uh, so we have to intervene surgically to uh, help. One of the reasons that we get uh, more chronic bloaters in the feedlot versus anything anywhere else is A, because of the type of feed they're on, and B, because of... And also because of bovine respiratory disease. So with bovine respiratory disease, uh, there is inflammation of the vagal nerve sometimes, and that vagal nerve can cause vagal indigestion. Vagal nerve is responsible for eructation or burping in cows, uh, so when it's inflamed it doesn't act right and those cows aren't able to burp properly. So we cut a window into the animal, uh, direct sewing the rumen directly to the skin and it acts as a valve so when pressure is too high it can release out the side of the animal. Uh, we do a few different variations of that technique but uh, they seem to be very successful. Uh, overall, if we look at our data, uh, about 86% of the animals that get that surgery will go on and uh, finish out the feeding period. To sleep. The window stays open for about two to three months, uh, then sometimes it closes up, but at that point, hopefully the BRD issue has resolved and those animals can erupt. Arthritis. This is the other stifle. This one's a lot juicier. That's not good. Alright, it's time for another edition of Today in the Postmortem Pit. So this was an incidental finding on an animal that died. I'll show you the significant lesions in a second. But here's his prepuce, and here's his un... Here you can see areas of alopecia uh, or hair loss, and this is characteristic of Stephanophilaria. So Stephanophilaria is a parasite that is transmitted by the horn fly, and it likes to hang out on the underbelly of cows. This is the epicardial surface of the heart, and you can see there is a ton of fibrin. It's really, really thick. So this is known as an epicarditis or pericarditis. Sometimes it is secondary to hardware disease or Histophilus somni infection. Next up we have an animal that died of chronic pneumonia. So there was tons of fibrous adhesions all along the rib. That's the fibrous adhesions there. And there's just loads and loads of pus coming out of those lungs. So chronic pneumonia there. This is the lungs of another animal who had a severe chronic bronchopneumonia, but also an active component. We can see all the fibrin, but this is the heart and the papillary muscle, and here we see this area of necrosis. This is secondary to histophilus somni infection, known as myocarditis. 
This is the right lung of an animal that died of mycoplasma pneumonia. So you can see all of this lung is completely trashed. That's the only normal part right what you see is all these little miliary abscesses, these microabscesses caused by the mycoplasma. This animal was a free gas bloat, just like what we tried to prevent with the bloat surgery earlier. This animal did in fact have bovine respiratory disease and pneumonia, likely causing the free gas bloat due to vagal indigestion. So we have cranial, cranial congestion, rapid autolysis, and hind end pallor. So this is the edema we look for in between the muscle layers. You can see it's like clear jello. This is back to the first animal, the one with all the pus in the joints, secondary to mycoplasma, likely, causing the arthritis. And this next animal was euthanized. Unfortunately, he was hit by a bale wagon in the pen. This is the inside view of the ribs. Here you can see normal rib, and then you can see the fracture that happened when he was hit. So all that is bone fragment. This is his lung field. You can see a contusion there. And then there was also petechiation, so those little black dots. And that's it. That's what's in the postmortem pit today. Hey, little buddy. Jeez, I'm trying to take a picture of this.